All right, so the collision tool. Again, one of my top five favorite tools here inside of Substance Stager. So traditionally, when you're working in 3D applications, you're gonna run into the problem of having multiple objects and you may wanna position them together, but like, it's very, very easy to not know where, like to tell that you're like penetrating one or the other, right? Like it's, it can be really, really difficult to position those. And frankly, it's, it's just a bit of a pain in the butt, especially if you have a whole lot of something and you want to build a stack of them. Imagine if you have a bowl of cereal or a jar full of candies or something like that. Now, what the Substance Stager has done is simplified that process by adding a collision tool inside the software. Let me show you what that means. So basically, we have two different places where we want to ensure that the collision tool is turned on. There is right up here at the top, that's, and again, the collision tool always just looks like two little boxes banging into each other. So that one is going to set the collision at a global scale. That means basically it's telling the entire scene the collision is possible. Over here in the scene editor, this is where we're gonna tell it which models you want to collide with. And for this case, we want to uh, activate it here for each of our map characters. Now, check out what happens. If I move this guy up and then slide him down, you can see he starts to bump into him and by default, he automatically collides with the ground. And pop him back up here and do it again. Very cool stuff, right? So you can imagine that this is a really great layout tool for allowing things to fall organically. Love it so much. One other caveat to it as well is that you can um, duplicate this and, and basically there's there's another, we turn off collision wands inside of it. And oop. Move it up. So one other thing that you want to be aware of too. So previously in, in the second iteration of the map character, I turned on collision at the parent level. That will mean that, that all of it acts as like one giant piece. Now, if I was to open this up and turn on collision specifically for the head, body, and base, and now shift select those three, you'll see what happens here. So as I move this back down, these now are, are falling apart. They're acting as independent bodies interacting with this other space. So you have your option of however you wanna do that there. And now I've just created a mass of mat body is just laying here. So um, again, if you liked the parametric models, you're gonna love this. I think it's super fun. Uh, one last note additionally is just that inside of our uh, settings down here, you do have some uh, collision properties. You can also turn collision on down here as well. Um, I just find it easier to do this checkbox because if I wanted to turn a bunch on and off, I can also swipe through them. Um, you also have the ability to change uh, collider type. So you can either make it a uh, surface-based, concave, or uh, convex, or change the quality. If you want to do dive into that, they have more information in the documentation. But for the most part, for my use cases, I just interact with it and, uh, and I just am turning on collision on and off. The last thing that I'll say about it is that um, collision is um, separate from snapping. So it's either one is on or one is off. So once you've activated collision, um, you won't get, because you can see this sometimes when you're moving around through the objects, you'll see like, it's hard to describe is, but like you can feel, you can see how it like snaps into place on top of his, uh, on top of the head there. Um, if you're in collision mode, it won't do that. Even if I don't have collision on it. So just something to be aware of there as well. So collision, super fun, play around with it, destroy everything, be a little kid. And cause you can always just go up here and say file new and create a brand new blank scene whenever you're ready.